And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Cetiosaurus, which was a request from Paul via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. I like how you really emphasize the T in it. I always just say Cetiosaurus. And you're like, Cetiosaurus. Oh, I didn't even <laughs> notice. <laughs> so Cetiosaurus or Cetiosaurus was a sauropod that lived in the Middle Jurassic and what is now Europe in England, France, Switzerland, Morocco, which I, isn't Europe, but. Some of those specimens have since, actually most of those specimens have since been reassigned to different genera. Cetiosaurus is different from another sauropod, Cetiosauriscus, which also lived in the middle Jurassic and what is now England. So it's a little confusing. That's very confusing. But Cetiosaurus, anyway, it looks like other sauropods. It was quadrupedal, had the long neck and the small head. And Cetiosaurus... Oxoniensis, which is the type species as of 2014. I'll get into the history in a little bit. It's estimated to be 52 feet or 16 meters long and weigh 11 tons. Cetiosaurus had a shorter tail and neck than most sauropods. Its tail had at least 40 caudal vertebrae. And it had relatively long forelimbs. The forelimb was about the same length as the hind limb. The dorsal vertebrae in the back were heavy. They weren't hollow like other sauropods, such as Brachiosaurus. And being a sauropod, you might have guessed it was an herbivore. Based on its neck length and limb proportions, Cetiosaurus probably was a generalist feeder, eating vegetation at low and medium-high levels. And it lived in an area with floodplains and open woodland. So Cetiosaurus was a wastebasket taxon. There were 18 species named. And now only one is considered to be valid. That's Cetiosaurus oxoniensis. And as I mentioned, Cetiosaurus oxoniensis became the type species in 2014. And that one is based on multiple specimens. That includes most of the bones, but not much of the skull, although possibly a brain case. The genus name Cetiosaurus means whale lizard. Uh, I thought that might be Cetio. That's probably why there's the other Cetiosauriscus, too, because they're so big. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, this must be a whale. Or if they find the vertebrae first, then it becomes a whale. Yes. And also being found so early before we knew much about dinosaurs. So Cetiosaurus was described in 1841 by Richard Owen, who originally thought it was a large marine animal, maybe a whale, maybe a crocodile. And he named Cetiosaurus just before he coined the term dinosauria. But he thought it was a large marine animal, so that's why it's not one of the original dinosaurs. Oh, interesting. The species name Oxoniensis refers to Oxford. So John Kingdon had reported the first fossils of Cetiosaurus that were found in Chipping Norton, England, in a letter that was read in 1825 to the Geological Society, and then Owen named the animal. And Cetiosaurus was first described based on caudal vertebrae, limb elements, and a partial shoulder girdle. So without knowing much about dinosaurs and without knowing anything about sauropods, I could see how it'd be hard to piece together what it would look like. Mostly what they knew back then was that it was a giant. At least the things they knew that were right. (laughs) Yeah. And Richard Owen said that its bones were much bigger than an elephant's or megalosaurus and that only iguanodon and whales were similar in size. There's a quote from the Proceedings of the Geological Society of London in 1842 that says, Quote, as there is no known extinct saurian which can so nearly compete in size with the Cetiosaurus as the Iguanodon, it is fortunate Professor Owen observes that the distinguishing characters are so well marked and easily recognizable. End quote. Just found that one interesting now that we know more. Yeah, it's interesting that he didn't think it was a dinosaur, but compares it to Iguanodon. Mm-hmm. That's probably because Richard Owen thought the limb bones were like crocodiles and the vertebrae were like whales. He also thought Cetiosaurus was carnivorous. <laughs> like those early sauropod depictions where they're carnivorous. Yes. Although, so Mark Witten has a fun whale-like version of Cetiosaurus based on Richard Owen's description. And thank you to our patron Morgan for the link. It's got this long tail, a big middle and strong jaws. And just looks so different from Mm. how (laughs) we know Cetiosaurus looks now. Well, presumably without the skull, if you're just basing what the head might be like Mm -hmm. on the vertebrae and things, you'd never expect it to have this little puny head at the end. It's true. (laughs) Uh, Later, Richard Owen did classify Cetiosaurus as a crocodilian. And then in 1842, he named two additional species, Cetiosaurus 
Hypoolithicus and Cediosaurus epiolithicus, based on fossils found in Yorkshire. And then that same year, he named four more species. Oh, jeez. There's Cediosaurus brevis, the short one, Cediosaurus brachyurus, the short-tailed, Cediosaurus medius, the medium size, and Cediosaurus longus, the long one. Take it easy with the Cediosaurus. It's too many Cediosaurus. <laughs> well, when he was naming those four new ones, he used the fossils from the Cediosaurus Hypoolithicus and Cediosaurus Epiolithicus, so they stopped using those two names at least. So that does add to some of the confusion because he named the two species Cediosaurus Hypoolithicus and Cediosaurus Epiolithicus first, but then when he named the four additional species, he stopped using those two names because he used the fossils from those two species to name his other four species. Oh, so those two got like reinterpreted into the other four names? Yes. Oh, weird. And then in 1849, it was found that some of those fossils were from Iguanodon today. <laughs> Speaking of Iguanodon. <laughs> yeah. So Alexander Melville in 1849 named the fossils that were from sauropods, from which turned out to be from Cetiosaurus brevis, as Cetiosaurus coniberi, but then that didn't really make sense. It just made Cetiosaurus coniberi a junior synonym of Cetiosaurus brevis. Yeah, but this was before the ICZN, and I guess it sounds like Richard Owen was doing similar stuff, renaming his own species to new species, too. It's a good point. Uh, Richard Owen thought that Cetiosaurus was a crocodile as late as 1859. And then they figured out that it was a dinosaur, presumably? Thomas Huxley said it was a dinosaur in 1869. Oh, nice. There was a right femur of Cetiosaurus oxoniensis found in 1868 by workers, and then Professor John Phillips excavated from 1869 to 1870 and found three skeletons. Uh, and those filled in the missing pieces that made it obviously a dinosaur rather than a whale or a crocodile. Hmm. So Phillips named two species in 1871. There's Cetiosaurus oxoniensis and Cetiosaurus glyptonensis. And then... In 1871, he also suggested that Cetiosaurus was an herbivorous dinosaur in a monograph. Twist. Yeah. So it changed a lot in those 30-ish years. And in 1875, Richard Owen said Cetiosaurus was a large aquatic dinosaur. So he came around to the dinosaur part. Yeah, and that was par for the course that these huge animals couldn't live on land, at least. I, I think that was well into the 20th century then when people started really fully coming around on them being terrestrial. Mm -hmm. Then after 1875, there's not too much on Cetiosaurus until 1968, when a new Cetiosaurus oxoniensis specimen was found, and that one's called the Rutland dinosaur, and was found by somebody who was driving an excavation vehicle at the base of the Rutland Formation in England. And this Rutland dinosaur is the most complete sauropod found in the UK, which is why sometimes you might hear people say Cetiosaurus is the most complete sauropod in the UK. Cool. It's about 40% complete, and it includes most of the cervical bones, most of the dorsal vertebrae, part of the sacrum and anterior caudals, chevrons, ilium, right femur, and rib and limb, f and rib and limb fragments. So no skull. Yes. It's about 49 feet or 15 meters long, and since 1985 has been on display in the Leicester Museum and Art Gallery. And if you're trying to find the Rutland dinosaur and you're Googling Leicester, it's spelled L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R, which is not how I would spell Leicester. Yes. Well, as an American, yes. <laughs> That's true. If you live near there, you might know how to spell it, I suppose. So Cetiosaurus, again, was a wastebasket taxon. Thirteen species of Cetiosaurus have been named on fossils that were found in England, three from France, one from Morocco, and one from Switzerland. That is a lot of species. Yes. Well, what made this very confusing was that Richard Owen initially named Cetiosaurus without n giving it a species name. <laughs> it's just a genus. Yeah. That's how most people talk about dinosaurs. Who needs the species name? But then you name 18 types of species <laughs> and it gets very confusing. It's true. <laughs> so Cetiosaurus... Medius was traditionally considered to be the type species of Cetiosaurus, and Richard Owen did say so shortly after naming it in an 1842 article. Richard Lidecker assigned Cetiosaurus oxoniensis as the type species in 1888, but by modern rules of the ICZN, the original author, Richard Owen, is the one who would select the type species. 
In 2003 and 2009, Paul Upchurch and John Martin looked through all the species of Cediosaurus and found most of them to be invalid because a lot of them were based on fragmentary material. Yeah, where at the time they seemed unique, but now that we've found so many more sauropods, we look at it and we're like, that's just not it's not enough. enough. Yeah. <laughs> they also found some of the species to be valid dinosaurs, but they were just different types of dinosaurs, not sauropods. <laughs> Interesting. Or maybe some were sauropods, but yeah, just not CTSRs. Which is kind of funny because in 1905, there was a paper on parts of the skeleton Cetiosaurus leads eye, and it was a new specimen found near Petersboro that said, quote, This specimen is so well preserved that since its acquisition by the British Museum, it has been possible to mount the various bones on ironwork in their natural position. And there was a chain of 10 small vertebrae, and they said, quote, A chain of such vertebrae at the end of so massive an animal as Cetiosaurus must have been especially liable to accident. I mean, I just like that second quote about being liable to accident. Mm -hmm. But the main thing here was that they thought it was so well preserved and, you know, they could mount it so easily. But in 2003, Paul Upchurch and John Martin found that there was nothing, nothing diagnostic in that species. And they found that that species was a gnomum dubium. So back then, a amazing specimen from 1905 became a not even very useful specimen in 2003. Mm hmm. So Upchurch and Martin proposed to the ICZN to change the type species from Cetiosaurus medius because they found medius to be invalid due to the fossils not being distinct enough to become Cetiosaurus oxoniensis. And they found five atapomorphies of Cetiosaurus oxoniensis, including having these quote-unquote pyramid-shaped neural spines in the dorsal vertebrae. And the ICZN accepted the proposal in 2014 which is why, as of 2014, the type species is Cetiosaurus oxoniensis. So Upchurch and Martin proposed that the Rutland dinosaur be the lectotype for Cetiosaurus oxoniensis, which makes sense, the most complete one. Scientists have suggested Cetiosaurus to be closely related to neosauropods, so Cetiosaurus may help show the origins of neosauropods. You can see a Cetiosaurus statue at Edaville Family Theme Park in Massachusetts. <laughs> And there are Cetiosaurus fossils in the collections at the Museum of Gloucester. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 